Hello, welcome back to the I Just Love Footy YouTube channel. I'm wanting to give a quick recap on today's practice match between Melbourne and Richmond. The format of the game was seven periods, 20 minutes with time on. However, I'm just going to talk more specifically about the first four quarters, as that mainly comprised of both teams are uh, you know, strongest 22 for the most part. As far as the score worm was concerned for the game, we saw Melbourne start with the ascendancy in the first quarter, kicking four goals unanswered, and then Richmond responded really well and kicked 10 goals straight unanswered against a, uh, I, would, I would suggest, a stronger team in Melbourne when it comes to the both of the team's availabilities. I felt like Melbourne had a lot less out uh, ability-wise relative to, to Richmond. I think with Richmond, we had Taranto out, we had Dustin Martin out, we had Dylan Grimes out, uh, Dion Prestia and, and Melbourne. You know, they still had Petrarca, Gorn, Stephen May, Jay Cleaver. So there was, I feel like there was a bit of a discrepancy strength-wise. And, and that's why it was even more impressive to see Richmond respond the way they did after conceding the first four or five goals to then subsequently bounce back and kick 10 goals in a row. And ultimately, that pretty much set the precedent for the rest of the game. It was a bit of back and forth from there on. Melbourne did bite back into the game in the second half. However, Richmond ended up holding on score-wise. Uh, I know it's a practice match and score doesn't matter, but in you know, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that both teams were mindful of the scoreboard because that's what keeps the game competitive. And ultimately, while they are looking at other variables in the game, I think that the scoreboard is a pretty fair metric as to how you've gone about your game, generally speaking. Moving on, from an individual performance standpoint, we'll start with the Melbourne Demons. I want to talk about Cozzy Pickett. Man, he was elusive today. Like He was thrusted into the middle quite a few times and he was yeah, just untouchable in the middle. He, just, he was just able to burst out of the middle and find a target from there on. It gives me a real energy of, uh, you know, breaking the glass in case of emergency for Melbourne this season. I feel like, I think Cos is a really good trump card for those situations. Who knows, maybe we might get a lot more midfield time than just the break glass in case of emergency situations for Cosy Pickett this season. Kynan Brown, son of Nathan Brown, was also very impressive for the Melbourne Demons, particularly in the first quarter. He scored an unbelievable goal from the boundary. Uh, he had great inside 50 tackling pressure and he had a couple goal assists as well. So really excited to see what he can bring for the Melbourne Demons this season. Will we see him get an early tilt for, for the team in the AFL? That's, uh, yeah, I guess we'll, we'll see how that goes. Just overall, I just think overall he had some really good footy smarts in those moments where he had the chance to impact the game. He crumbed uh, packs that were crashed inside 50 like I said, inside 50 tackles, goal assists. So for an 18-year-old to come in and uh, in, a, in his first game, albeit in a practice match, I think it was very impressive and I'll be keeping a close look on Kynan kind of Brown. This Van Royen looked strong when he was leading out of his inside 50. Sometimes the, the delivery wasn't great for the Melbourne Demons forwards and I think that's something that's plagued the Demons. Almost, it almost feels like it's been a perpetual sort of thing that sort of plagued their their seasons, the inability to find the the right pass with the right composure inside 50. I think Petrarca talks to it a little bit in a podcast with Dylan Buckley recently. So uh, it was interesting to see that, you know, he acknowledged from a, from a player standpoint that, you know, the midfielders, the halfbacks kicking inside 50 really need to improve this season if they want to take their, their game to, to another tilt at the flag. In what was a disappointing output in the midfield for the Demons, Jack Viney was a was a shining light. He accumulated the ball. He, he put his head over the ball. He didn't care that it was a practice match. He wanted to win every 50-50 that he engaged in. I mean, when the going gets tough, the tough gets going, and he is that bloke. And if there was a war that I would have to go to, I would want Jack Viney leading me out to that war. Before I move on to Richmond, I want to quickly touch on track. Uh, Christian Petrarca was good. He fizzled out a little bit in, in moments of the games where, where Melbourne really needed him to step up practice match so let's not read into that too much and Stephen May was a little bit rusty you know he was he was poor with his decision making a bit fumbly and once again I know it's just a practice match so I'm not going to read too much into it but it's just another another thing to note from that game moving on to the very young impressive Richmond team 
in today's game. Let's talk about Jack Ross, Tyler Sonzi, and, and Thomas Dow. They really led the way and were really prominent when there was questions being asked early in the, in the game when when Melbourne did come out firing. Who was going to be the who were the players that were going to say no? We're not going to fold here, even if it's a practice match. We want to respond, and they did more than that. They ended up coming back with ten goals, and I'm telling you, these three young kids really drove that bounce back for the team. And I think this is a big question mark surrounding Richmond season that. You know, it's all well and good if Tom Lynch and Dustin Martin and Taranto and Prestia and they're all playing. But if these young boys, these the bottom six players in the in the team don't perform, then their season will go nowhere. But if they do perform, that's why I think Richmond are a real chance at finding themselves within the top eight at some point of this season. Another youngster who I wanted to isolate, Josh Gipkis. Really good to see him back on the footy field, fit and fire. First and foremost, he got through unscathed, so that was really nice. I think he played three of the four quarters. They iced him in the fourth. His intercept marking was really impressive. He looked like he hadn't missed any footy and maybe made one mistake. And, you know, granted you've been out of the AFL intensity for quite some time now, I think we can excuse that in this regard. But... He is the man moving forward to to replace you know Dylan Grimes, Nick Vlossen, and can he reach the heights of an Alex Rant? I think there's a lot of potential there. He can swing forward later in his career as, as on a needs basis. So a lot of versatility and a multi-faceted player in Josh Gipkis. Bolton played like a really mature player who knew they needed to step up today in the absence of other leaders from the Richmond Football Club. So it was really a positive step forward for him and I think he's going to take a lot out of this game. He just stayed engaged the whole game and then basically towards the end of the game he, he took over. He ended up finishing with four goals and probably arguably a best on performance. 20 plus disposals, four goals, really mature and I think if we can see this more often then you know we're going to see Shy Bolton in the All-Australian conversations at the end of this season. Lastly let's talk about Noah Bolter and a little bit about Jacob Kaczynski. Noah Bolter is just, just a wrecking ball that doesn't matter where he plays he brings that defensive ethos into the forward line so Richmond are clearly really hopeful and optimistic that Noah Bolter can find a full-time position in the forward line to be a part of the supporting cast for Tom Lynch along with Jacob Kaczynski. I think Bolter, when, again, when the game was up for grabs, he kicked three goals, he had three goal assists, he had multiple contested marks against really likely competition in, in Stephen May and Jake Lever. So that was really impressive. He can be a bit chaotic and erratic sometimes and sometimes overplay on the ball. I think once he eradicates that out of his game, he's going to be a really good forward and, and you know, 40 to 50 goals is not out of the question for him this year if he can find some consistency and confidence in his game. Kaczynski would likely be that third tall and he essentially just did his job today and that's all that matters for Richmond. I think they you know, they just need to find that, that third forward who can just do a job and kick the goals when need be. Last thing I'll probably note is we're seeing Clayton Oliver and Christian Salem feature in the latter three periods. So the, obviously the first four periods of the two main teams, the last three were more VFL based. Clayton Oliver obviously getting his touch back and Christian Salem getting some time in the midfield alongside Oliver. So just a little FYI for you on that one. But that's pretty much my quick recap of today's practice match. Guys, if you like this content, please subscribe because I'll be posting this sort of stuff all season long and into the pre off-season and pre-season beyond. Thanks for your time. Bye.